one conviction, five acquittals, the disposal of a super yacht, and revelations of a bizarre international conspiracy. A plot to slip two tons of South America's finest into the sea off the coast of England, held up by more than a hundred life jackets. A coke float, so to speak. We now have a lot of answers to this amazing story, but a major mystery remains. Who is the boss behind it all? A man who goes by the name Rembrandt. To give yourself an underworld nickname of one of history's greatest artists means you must be extraordinarily talented or suffer a raging ego, and perhaps both. The mob reporter here with details of what happened after a luxury yacht was intercepted on the high seas last year, carrying an immensely valuable cargo. The details of how their plot unraveled, the fate of the crew, and what's now happened to that beautiful boat. Let me tell you about it. We'll start with the poor sap left holding the bag. Not just one bag, though. There were 96 of them, waterproof and heavy. Inside each was brick after brick after brick, more than 2,000 of them, neatly wrapped and tightly packed, in total weighing more than two tons. Police estimated the cocaine was worth 160 million British pounds. That's equivalent to about 200 million US dollars. His name is Andrew Cole, 33, of Stockton on Tees in England's north. Here he is when he was arrested in September after the dramatic high seas interception 80 miles off of England's coast. Cole was riding the waves in high fashion in a 37 meter super yacht. I told you of the yacht's boarding when it happened in a video I'll link to below. It was a fascinating tale with what I knew then, but now we finally learn the inside story. Please, get past the door! Get past the door! Please. The yacht has a story of its own. Called the Kahoo, she started life as a military vessel, formerly serving as a Royal New Zealand Navy patrol ship. When she was decommissioned in 2009, it was bought by the wealthy owner of a New Zealand superyacht shipyard, who rebuilt, repurposed, and refitted it as a long-ranged high-end expedition adventure yacht. And it's had some adventures. The ship's owner back then was Peter White Robinson, and he told me of how his family left New Zealand in 2012 on an around-the-world adventure. When they stopped for a visit on Canada's west coast, his company ran into financial trouble and its assets sold. That included his yacht. The Cahoos changed hands a few times over the years, and last summer it was bought with a different adventure in mind. Andrew Cole was the point man. Cole was named as the link between a transnational criminal organization and a group based in Britain planning to take delivery of the load near the English Channel. The plot began with buying the Cahoo in Florida. Cole traveled to Costa Rica and to Panama in May 2021, and in early July flew from Panama to Miami, and the next day flew to Barbados, where the Cahoo arrived from Florida on July 29th, sailing under a Jamaican flag. Cole was listed on the Cahoo's manifest as a crewman, but his role wasn't nautical. He was babysitting the cargo it would hold and in charge of making sure it got from South America to the streets of England. The Cahoo set sail from Port St. Charles in Barbados towards South America with a six-man crew, Cole, and five Nicaraguans, including a captain. There, a second ship met the Cahoo off the Atlantic coast of Suriname, where the load of black bags of coke were transferred onto the yacht before sailing east towards Europe. Once the Cahoo approached the English coast, their plan was to jettison Cole, wearing a wetsuit, from the yacht's rear swimming platform, along with the black bags all wrapped in cargo nets, into the English Channel, buoyed by more than 100 life jackets. A third ship was then to leave England's port of Southampton and pick up Cole and the cargo after Cole sent them the signal, a message reading, Willie is free. The problem was the plot was at least partially arranged using an encrypted phone app called Anom, which purported to be a secret communication system for criminals, but it was really a police sting operation run by the FBI and the Australian Federal Police. The Aussies alerted the British cops to Coles and Rembrandt's plans, and Britain's National Crime Agency was on to them, watching the Cahoo's progress. Cole was anxious to impress Rembrandt and kept in touch with him on the journey, letting him know how it was going every step of the way, 
using a Samsung mobile phone and a satellite connection. On August 28th, for example, Cole sent a message after the Suriname transfer of the load onto the Kahoo. Quote, count is complete, 2,000 bits, it read. Messages sometimes referred to the boss as Julio. Another message from Cole read, looking forward to getting back to Blighty and making you proud, boss. Blighty is a slang term for Britain. Cole also sent him a video clip of the open ocean with the note, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Cole did make it back to Britain, but it wasn't the happy return he envisioned, and I'm sure his boss wasn't so impressed. Two UK border force vessels were covertly monitoring and tracking the Kahoo as it approached English waters, and before Cole could free his willy on September 9, 2021, a 42-meter cutter and a 19-meter coastal patrol boat intercepted the yacht and boarded her. Cole sent two last desperate messages from his phone, one was a photo of the patrol ships approaching him. The other was four words. We are getting boarded. A reply came in a panic. Throw all phones. Did you copy? Throw all phones. Cole never got to read that reply, though. He had already tried to smash the phone, but it was recovered and repaired by police. Two weeks later, police raided homes in Hartlepool, a port town in England's north, not far from where Cole lived. Four men and a woman were taken into custody on suspicions of conspiracy in the yacht plot. Here's what's happened since. On May 26, 2022, Cole was sentenced to 18 years in prison. He had earlier admitted his role in the plot and agreed to plead guilty. The evidence against him on the phone was overwhelming. It included a drawing of how the bags were to be suspended by the life jackets. The Nicaraguan skipper and his crew, however, were all cleared of their charges after a trial in March. A jury seemed to accept that they were hapless helpers in a scheme by Cole and external forces, although they were detained on immigration charges. As for the Kahoo, she was seized as a government asset and recently put up for sale in a no-reserve online auction held in Belfast, Ireland by Wilson's Auctions. Instead of hiding the ship's past, it was highlighted in the sales pitch. It would certainly give a few stories for the owner to tell while sailing. Unfortunately, the mob reporter's bid just wasn't enough. When the hammer fell, the winning bid was 473,500 British pounds. That's about 750,000 US dollars. The mysterious Rembrandt, meanwhile, also known as Julio, has so far kept off the grid. Court heard the Cahoo's owners at the time of the seizure were based in the Marshall Islands. That's a group of small islands in the Pacific Ocean. The Marshall Islands are most famous as the site of World War II battles and as home to Bikini Atoll. That's the U.S. nuclear bomb testing site until 1958. As for the old owner of Kahoo, the man who had the amazing and crazy idea of crafting a luxury yacht out of a Navy patrol boat, who I introduced you to in a previous video, well, Peter White Robinson told me this week he heard the auction for his old ship was coming up. Quote, someone got a good deal for that price. Unfortunately, it wasn't me who bought her. I miss her a lot, but life has to go on. Unquote. And life goes on for the Kahoo as well. Bon voyage. Maybe we'll meet her again. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.